You could think of a German car as having been made in Germany, and then when it was sold in France, it was sold in France, and it was really the car crossing the border. Since the global value chain revolution, the uh, last 20 years or so, you can think of international commerce as also being factories crossing borders. So in other words, the production network that used to happen inside a factory, mostly in US, Japan, and Germany, those factories are being spread across the borders. And that's changed the nature of globalization entirely. The, the implications are very, very complex, uh, but the, the most important one for Lithuania is that it allows an industrialization or a participation of Lithuania in global value chains that was not possible before. If you want to analyze the global trade slowdown of the past period, uh, you should compare it with the period before the financial crisis in 2008. So in our analysis, what we did is we looked at the drivers of global trade in the period 2000-2008, and we compared that with the drivers of the global trade in the period 2011-2014. And if you do that, you actually see that there is a change in the drivers of the trade intensity of global demand. In the period 2000-2008, you saw an increase in the trade intensity, which was mainly due to the fragmentation of production. Production took place in more countries, there was fragmentation of the production process, and this contributed to an increase in the trade intensity of global demand. What happened after the crisis, and we see especially after 2011, that this process of international production fragmentation has stalled. There are some signs that there is reshoring taking place. There is some indication that China is more and more producing intermediate inputs within the country itself, such that the global supply chains become shorter and not longer as they did before the financial crisis. To understand the regulation of the destination market, we'll need to run a specific advertising campaign for that market. And so all these are examples of Task, the new task the firm has to do, they are country specific and knowledge intensive. So the idea here is that as the, mar the firm is going to enter more and more markets, there's going to be an increase in this number of tasks that the firm has to solve. These tasks are knowledge intensive and of course it's very hard for the manager to uh, handle all these tasks together and produce them in-house. So there's going to have an effect of outsourcing them and so increasing the market transaction, increasing the demand for services. The initial sort of proposal of the social model was a pretty long um, replacement rate, that is the duration of the replacement rate, that's how long you would be entitled to get a benefit effectively. And uh, I'm pretty happy to see that actually in the ultimate law, they have reduced it to the six month rather than nine month, and our results indicate indeed that this could lead to a dramatic change in a sense that we shall expect, you know, the intended uh, results, that is, the unemployment would go down, the GDP would go up, etc. Because we really what matters, it seems, uh, is not that much the magnitude, but the length, for instance, of the unemployment benefit. We need to look at competitiveness in terms of efficiency of the productive system and the policy option to uh, readjust uh, uh, external positions for deficit countries in the euro area would be uh, to boost the efficiency of, the, of their productive system policies geared uh, uh, toward uh, improvement in productivity um, accompanied where there is uh, space for, uh, for fiscal action um, uh, by support uh, in the case these policies were to imply uh, transition costs and on the part of the surplus countries uh, uh, the prescription should be that of expansionary policy but of course uh, there is the question whether the key surplus players such as Germany uh, will be willing to go to go along with, uh, with that uh, prescription. This interdependence or this dependence on foreign price development uh, goes uh, quite a bit deeper than exchange rates and, and oil prices. It goes 
uh, directly to the interdependence between inflation rates between countries. So that suggests that perhaps the monetary authorities, especially in small open economies, should pay attention to even more than exchange rates and, uh, and oil prices and really look directly at foreign inflation rates. And more broadly, the message is summarized by the word interdependence. In this kind of environment, monetary policies across diff the different countries are quite interdependent, which means that coordination of monetary policy becomes even more important for achieving, uh, let's say, uh, goals of uh, low inflation.